Well, you know, when uh, I pastor here in Murfreesboro, Illinois, the name of the church is called Christ Community Church. And when all of this started happening with, you know, right at the beginning of 2020, when things started taking place, I told my wife, I said, I don't know what's going on with this virus. I said, but this is more than about a virus. And this was before it had become political. I just sensed in my spirit that something was getting ready to happen. And then when, you know, mandates started coming that churches had to close, it, this was a real struggle for me because I thought I'm not closing this church down. No, no man has the right to tell you to close a church. I did mission work in Russia for quite a few years. And I remember what happened in Russia. They took the people's Bibles from them. And Philip, you know, that if you were caught with a Bible in Russia under communism, you were sentenced to six years in prison, or no, I'm sorry, 10 years in prison for every Bible they caught you with. And they took those Bibles and piled them in the middle of the street and burned them. And I thought, we can't see that happen in this nation. And yeah. sometimes things happen that people look at and they're thinking, all they see is the circumstance, but they're not looking at the spirit that's moving behind it. Yes. And so when the pandemic hit and they started calling for the closure of churches, what we did is we moved into the parking lot <laughs> instead of if they said, well, you can't have it in the church. We just decided to have church outside of the four walls. And we had <laughs> I think we had like, you know, you have to understand Murfreesboro is a small town. The total population is uh, just over. I believe it's just over. 8,000 wow. and we had, we had over a hundred vehicles pulling into the parking lot to okay. have service. And, uh, and it was, you know, we had people driving from a hundred miles to be in service with us and folks coming from other places because you, you just have to make up your mind that you're not going to allow Tell us. something to keep you from worshiping God. Say you've that got again, to Monday. have a yes. You just got to have a determination that you're not going to stop worshiping God. Look, there were you know as well as I do that there were. We had brothers and sisters in Russia that they had to go into the woods to worship, and many yep. of them gave their life for the cause of Christ. Yeah, and we've got to get more of a backbone than a wishbone, Jesus. and I think that uh, we're moving to that place. The other thing that happened is that when, you know, when all of these things started taking place, people were fearful and they began to, uh, I, there, there were so many voices saying so many things that people began to become afraid. And look, you have to understand that fear is in direct opposition to faith. The Bible said Absolutely. that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And so... I understand that we can be unsure about things, but we don't need to operate in a spirit of fear. Truth. Truth. So, so from, I, I mean, I'm trying to, I, I want to interact with you a little bit. So, well, uh, 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 let me, let me say this. Fear is the devil's faith. Listen, to exactly. Me. If you're watching me today, the devil uses fear like God uses faith. The Bible says what Job feared came upon him. And what the devil tries to do in any scenario, as we're in this nation right now, what the devil will try and do is he will try to put a picture, a vision, a, an image of what, what's going to happen. And depending on your reaction to that image, if you fear it, then you give it the power to become a reality. If you laugh at that and say, that is not God, and God is not, that's not God, God's bigger than this. And if you put the devil in his place by, with faith, then that image will dissipate and go away. And you'll discover that, that, that the fear that the devil has put on you goes away as well. But let me tell you, fear is as real a thing as faith. And the devil Absolutely. uses that. And it's time for us to move past fear and walk towards faith. There's a saying that says, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, and nobody was there. <laughs> so when you allow your faith to answer your fear, Brilliant it stuff. will cancel it out. 
when when this happened and we we started out you know side i, I started feeling something come up in my spirit yeah and i started telling the team i said look there's a great great awakening that is starting to take place i said i can sense it we're on just the very edge of it and but this is going to build as we go forward yeah and then as the summer went on and we stayed outside i mean you know we had we ended up in revival we had a parking lot revival we baptized more people this year than we had in the previous years we've been here it, it's just been an outpour of his spirit we saw people coming to the lord but there's a real danger of apathy in the church and so as you come back into the building when we moved back in the building in uh on father's day actually and we went to two services so we could split the crowd up sure. and uh Twice. make more room so people weren't crowded and you know we could practice social distancing and there's something wrong with that as well. And I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm going to say, but I started looking at all this stuff and I said, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as you see the day approach. That and as I look at this, I think, man, there is a spiritual battle that's going on for the hearts and souls of the world, not just Absolutely. America, but the entire world. Absolutely. But America has led when it came to spreading the gospel throughout yes. the world. That's why this nation has been so blessed. And we have seen a direct attack on our faith from the point that we have a president saying that this is not a Christian nation. Well, I beg your pardon. You weren't there when this nation was started. And yes, this is a Christian, a nation. Christian nation. John Adams yes. made the statement. He said that this constitution was written for a Christian people, that it's not going to work without that. And so wow. we've lost sight of who we are. Now, look, mm -hmm. in Scripture, God brought Israel to its knees, not to destroy them, but to wake them up. He yeah. wanted them to turn to him. But the more he blessed them, the further away they got from him. Right. I thought about in our own nation, Abraham Lincoln made a statement. He was uh, during one of his speeches and he uh, now, this I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this, but he was saying we've come to a place where we feel like it's our own ingenuity and by our own ability that we've caused all these blessings to be heaped on us, that we've become yeah. prosperous and we've forgotten the God that made us that way. And I'm telling you that God is shaking this nation. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about you know, the political system that's in play and what's happening. And I'm here to tell you that there is that there. And everybody knows this. I mean, you, you would have to be blind not to realize the corruption that has been going on in our government for years. Yeah. And it's on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. And so anyone that Sorry. comes in to try to address it or attack it is immediately I mean, it's like a pack of wolves going yeah, after Set them. upon, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. what we have to understand is we have to quit putting our eyes and our faith in man. That's what got us where we're at now. We have to keep our faith in God. And I'm telling you that there are things that are happening right now that people may not even be aware of. They've already discovered that, I mean, there, there's no question that there was fraud during this election. No question about it. No, Other no countries doubt. have found it out. They've already got people that have sworn affidavits and said they were a part of it. In Italy. That's beside yeah. the point. That, and, and this, is what I, wh this is what I wanna make sure we don't do. I wanna make sure we don't turn this into a political fight. This is about a fight for the heart and soul of America. Amen. Because it doesn't matter in the White House, if our eyes are not on God, nothing's going to change but you mark my word we've just seen the beginning of this and this is going to continue to unravel and we're going to see more and more of this stuff happen i told my wife i said look i said people have been looking for like a knight in shining armor that's going to ride in and you know and, and going to expose this i said that's not happening what's going to happen is god in his infinite wisdom 
is I don't know how he's going to do this, but I, I, I feel in my spirit that God is going to reveal this in such a profound way Absolutely. that people are going to have to step back and say, that was God. It's but always in the seems, middle of this. It, go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. No, it just, what I, I've always discovered that it always seems that evil prevails at the beginning. The darkness you know, is uncovered and, and everyone goes, oh my goodness, what's going to happen to us? When Hitler invaded Poland and, and, and Britain had an agreement with Poland that if, if they were invaded, they would have to fight against whoever invaded them. It was Germany. And when we stood by ourselves in, in utter darkness and the Blitzkrieg had run across Europe and taken all of Europe and Germany was now only a few miles across the English Channel, 22 miles across the English Channel, and our country was absolutely at the point of, of being decimated then God rose up in the, in the form of the United States of America. And they came and we pushed all of that darkness back. And then Russia came up and communism came up. Every, look at me, my friend. Listen to me. Everything that has, been, that has come from the pit of hell has ended up dying and losing. And it's going to happen again. But we have got to look to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. If you're looking at the circumstance, then your faith will fail. And that's exactly what Rick is speaking about right now.